This happened when I was only five years old. I remember that my family was coming back home from my grandparents' cottage that day. While on the way home, I started to have an extremely painful toothache. It was so strong that I was crying and screaming out in pain. So my mom searched the internet for the nearest hospital. Unfortunately, the only one around the area we were in was a mental hospital, which only had a dentist room for the patients of the hospital and for some emergency situations. As my mom was nervous about the patients, we immediately ran to the dentist's room. The dentist was in his early 40s, bald, and I remember that he had a really weird, kind of funny look about him. As we walked in, I guess he was annoyed about the fact that I was crying back then. Hey, kid, shut up. Real men don't cry, he said. I was just a five-year-old boy. My dad got pissed off, but he controlled himself because we weren't able to find another doctor. Suddenly, the dentist became super sweet and told me to sit on the chair. While he was checking my mouth, he seemed kind of nervous, but he was also saying some jokes to my seven-year-old brother. My brother started laughing, and then... What the dentist did almost made my heart drop. He screamed to my brother, Stop laughing or I'll take your brother's teeth out, one by one. It was enough. He was a weirdo, and at that point, my dad was furious. He was about to beat up this madman, but thankfully my mom calmed him down. Of course my brother got scared and started crying. He told him to get out because he was so annoying that he couldn't do his work. So dad got out with my brother and mom stayed with me. Being paranoid, my mom didn't feel comfortable about leaving five-year-old me behind with a weird stranger. I remember clearly that he looked at me in a very weird way that gave me the creeps. Just then, mom asked him if she could use the toilet that was in the room. Oh, sorry ma'am. This isn't a restroom. It's a room we keep old stuff, he said. But we could clearly see the restroom sign on the door, and even hear the noise of running water that the toilet made. From that moment until the end, the dentist seemed anxious. He was sweating and his hands were shaking. When he finished with my tooth, we immediately left and went home and my mom called her sister to tell her everything about the incident. A week after, my aunt called my mom. Did you see the news? She told us that she saw a dentist who had killed a woman in her late 20s, and he was keeping her in his clinic's bathroom for almost a week. And the place... The place was the same hospital where we had gone before. Shaking her hands, Mom turned on the TV, and there he was. It was the same man who had checked my tooth. That explained his weird behavior and why he didn't let my mom use the bathroom. A dead body was only a few meters away from me and my family. The dentist was diagnosed with schizophrenia and finally sentenced to death. I'm so glad that my mom didn't go to the bathroom anyway. And from my experience, I learned something that I want to share with you guys. If you ever notice that someone has a weird behavior that makes you feel uncomfortable, don't just stay there. Find an excuse and immediately leave. And this might save your life. So this happened last year when I was house-sitting for my neighbor. He was in the hospital for a few days recovering from surgery, and I had been asked to stay in the house and keep an eye on his cats. The house was pretty small, but it was on a nice wide-open property by the woods. 
and there was a tiny swinging cat flap on the kitchen door where the cats could come and go as they pleased. The flap led into a screened-in back porch, and the house only had one bedroom, so I chose to sleep on the couch in the living room. After cleaning up, feeding the cats, and watching some TV, I shut off all the lights and laid back on the couch. I had my phone out and was casually scrolling through Facebook when I heard the flap swinging back and forth. From where I was in the living room, I couldn't see the door because the counter was in the way, but I glanced over to see one of the cats scamper over and leap up on my legs. I gave it a welcoming pat on the head and continued scrolling. After another minute, I heard the cat door make a noise again, a soft squeak. This time, I didn't even glance over, figuring it was the second cat following the first into the house. Another few moments passed, then I heard the squeaking again, and then after another moment, it squeaked a third time. I looked up from my phone, wondering why the second cat was jumping in and out like that. I was wondering if I would have to scoop it up and put it in the bedroom. The door continued to squeak for another couple of minutes, as the second cat continued to jump in and out. I finally decided that I had enough. I put my phone down and sat up on the couch. I began to stretch. As I did, I happened to glance behind the couch, and my blood froze. The second cat was curled up in its bed in the corner, and the first cat was still nestled between my legs. My confusion turned to fear instantly. Was there another animal on the back porch? Another cat, maybe? I slowly stood up and carefully made my way over to the back door, tiptoeing across the carpet in my socks. The door made a squeaking noise again. I peered around the counter and felt the sensation of my heart leaping up into my throat. And at the same moment, my stomach dropped. By the faint rays of the nightlight in the hallway, I saw an arm reaching through the cat door straining to get at the knob. The fingertips were brushing at the lock. For a few short seconds, all I could do was stare in terror, frozen by the surreal silent reality of what I was experiencing. It almost didn't feel real. The severity of the situation hit me, and I realized that if the intruder got in, I wasn't going to stand a chance. I grabbed a large two-pronged fork that was used for flipping steaks on a grill and in one swift motion, I stabbed at the arm right below the wrist, as hard as I could. There came a thunderous scream of pain from the other side of the door. And the arm was immediately retracted through the flap. But the fork had impaled the intruder, so it caught itself on the door. That produced a second loud scream, and the arm was wrenched violently outside. I heard the clatter of the fork on the ground, and then I heard footsteps sprint across the back porch and out the screen door. I immediately turned on the outside lights and caught the glimpse of a figure running towards the woods. Instead of calling the cops, I scooped up both cats, stuffed them into the same carrier, grabbed my phone, my shoes, and sprinted out to my car, which was thankfully parked inside the garage. I drove up the road a couple of miles to my place and once I was safely inside, I called the cops. It took them half an hour to get to my place, and then another half hour of questioning before they continued down the road to check out my neighbor's house. They told me that there was no sign that the screen door had been broken into, and aside from the bloodstains, there was no sign of the intruder. They put out an alert to local hospitals for a man with a stab wound on his right arm. The following morning, the police brought a dog out to follow the scent, but whoever the lucky bastard was, he was never caught. I kept the cats at my place until my neighbor was out of the hospital. It still shakes me to my soul, the idea that the stranger chose that house in the middle of nowhere, trying to get inside. And if I hadn't got off the couch when I did, this may have ended very differently.